Welcome back to the Chess Geek channel. Today we are going to look at a really cool gambit and way to play against the fried liver attack. And what's awesome about this is that it's fresh and it's new. And for the longest time, I always believed there to be only two viable uh, or practical ways to play against the fried liver attack. The first, of course, being the more solid d5 and going into this very theoretical variation, and the other one being, of course, the Traxler with bishop to c5. But now we have a, a totally new one, which I recently discovered, which is super cool, uh, and I never even considered before. And that is what this entire video will cover. So, if you enjoy and are excited for this new way to play against the fried liver attack, then make sure you drop a like, and let's jump straight into it. We play here knight takes e4. Now, this is known as the Ponziani Steinitz Gambit, something of this sort. And the whole concept is, first of all, we want to distract them a little, right? For example, if they were to take here, we distract them from their main goal of attacking f7. Secondly, we want to take a ton of control in the center. That is very often going to be the source of our compensation. If they choose to take here, our compensation is the fact that we have full control in the center because we just removed one of their key pieces in the center. Now, we have to really look at three main variations. Knight takes knight, which is really not challenging at all, and it's really good if they play this. Knight takes f7, which is equally bad and just not, not so hard to play against, and very quickly we can debunk this. And bishop to f7, which is the best option they have. The engine give them a roughly a plus two advantage, but they have to play super precisely, and chances are we're going to be knowing this sort of position more. And also, we have more natural moves, sort of only moves, that come to mind more quickly and naturally than they do. And so all of these variations tend to be good for us, and um, practically speaking, of course, and two of them are actually objectively also totally good. So let's begin by knight takes e4. Of course, our main uh, idea here is this common trap where you, uh, or, or tactic, you could say, it's not really a trap, where you take a pawn in the center only to strike back uh, and win back your piece that you're sacrificing. And the whole reason you sometimes go for these sort of ideas is because you get good control in the center. In this case, we win a pawn. And even though these pawns certainly can be argued that they're weak, this one not so much, this one a little bit more, it's making the development of the opponent hard. For example, they can't really play this. We're happy to take it and trade into a, a simpler position. Same thing with b3 or b4. And so it's just an annoying pawn, really, in their position. And so we're happy to get this sort of position. The better option is bishop d3 and take it in, a, in this sort of way where it's a bit more advantageous because they win back the pawn and we don't they don't have to deal with this annoying pawn so they can play d3 soon. But this is not an issue at all. I mean, we have more development, more control in the center still. This bishop is very, uh, it could be very problematic here with f5 coming. And for example, after bishop e7, castles, castles, and let's say d3, we have a plethora of ideas, including knight to d4, we have bishop e6, we have f5, all sorts of uh, good ways to get our pieces involved, good ways to get good activity in the position and really fight for the initiative. So in general, knight takes e4 is not an issue um, for us, and it's really not something we, we have to take a lot of time on. Let's get on to a bit of a more serious option they have, knight to f7. Now, the key thing about this knight here is the pressure it exerts on f2. So we quickly strike back with the resource that otherwise we wouldn't have, queen to h4, threatening mate. So of course, they can't take here on h8. And there's already some pretty big issues. Very often, g3 is the move that white resorts to here, but it doesn't work. We have this nice tactic. Obviously, they can't take here. They lose the rook immediately. And if they take here, they're going to lose the rook uh, as well. And... The important thing is we don't even are we're not even necessarily losing our rook because whatever they block with we take here with check, and if they choose to move their king that's even worse. We can develop with check, then get the rook in perhaps, or just take here actually with check, and we're totally crushing them. We're getting more pieces involved, not what they want. So g three 
is uh, not sufficient. Castling is slightly better, still not amazing. We have this nice tactical idea. And you see how tactical and um, just beautiful these sort of positions are. We have all these tactics, all these tricks and ideas. And even though I'm going through them really quickly, if you uh, perhaps study this, the variations that I'm going to show here, and I'll leave a PGN below, if you study this PGN uh, just you know a little bit so you understand the common tactics, then you're going to know these positions so much more than your opponent. And here after rook takes, the whole point is to get the bishop out uh, and pin the rook. And in this sort of position, if they take on h8, then there's a, a variety of ways to go about this position. For example, we can take. If they take here, they lose the bishop for nothing. So they'll go here, trying to at least win something for it. But now we don't take, we go bishop b3. Threatening checkmate, threatening the bishop, threatening to bring our knight in as well and win the pawn here and then mate them. So for example, queen to e2, seemingly defending the, the most important ideas well, now we can take on h2, threatening mate, also defending this pawn so the knight can come in as well. And it's just, it's uh, it's game over. Put clearly, it's, there's no way they can survive that. So bishop c5, in this position, they have to go queen f3 or something like this where they defend the rook rather than being greedy and taking. But now we can go rook f8, right? We save the material. We also line up more pressure on the f file. We have clearly the initiative here. And even if objectively we're not, we're not better, which we are in this case, but even if in some positions we won't be better objectively, we're going to have the initiative. And really, white doesn't want to play against uh, the initiative. The whole point of the fried liver attack is to get the initiative, right, and to sacrifice pieces to get a good aggressive attacking game. But now we're churning, flipping the tables on them. So either way, we're super happy. And uh, after knight takes e4 and knight takes f7, uh, queen to h4, threatening mate, their best option is what we will look at next, which is queen to e2. But this isn't um, problematic either. We go knight d4, attacking the queen, also threatening this fork. Notice they can't move their queen back like they would want to because we have mate. And instead, I mean, they can try, for example, g3. This is the only real way to stay in the game. But now, for example, we take their queen and bring the knight back. We've ruined their pawn structure, making permanent weaknesses in their camp. And we have clear and very hard to stop um, pressure on this pawn, right? Noticing that the, the a3 square is not accessible. And so after knight takes h8, we take here, we take... Uh, then on a1, and after knight to f7, trying to bring back the knight, we can go d5. Very nice, common, thematic, tactical idea, disconnecting the connection between this knight and the bishop. If the bishop were to, let's say, move away somewhere, not that it has great options, uh, to be frank, but then we would take the knight. And here, if it takes, of course, then our whole point is to bring back the knight, attack the bishop. Notice it can't go here. That's the benefit. We can then retrieve our knight with tempo and then win their knight. And if it goes, let's say, here, then we continue harassing it until it ultimately has to leave this diagonal. And again, it can't come here. So it has to leave these squares, and then we win the knight. And our knight is very hard to attack. They have to first get rid of some pieces. In the meantime, we can work on uh, an extraction plan for that knight. And that's basically everything with knight takes f7. It's not troubling. There's a ton of different tactics def depending on what they play. But ultimately, the tactics seem to work in our favor. Our final option, which is bishop f7. And to be frank, if they do prepare this well, and I mean very well because it's difficult to prepare this opening, which is very rare and uh, carries a lot of nuances, but if they do prepare this perfectly, like an engine, then they can uh, have a moderate advantage, you could say, after bishop takes f7. But it's hard to prepare this well, and we do have some practical compensation. So we go king e7, and our whole compensation, as I hinted upon earlier, is based upon the center control that we have and they lack. So for example, if they take the knight here, we can just, of course, take their bishop. And because of that center control that I was telling you about, we have great compensation. For example, check, we go back, and ultimately strike in the center further. And these two pawns in the center, the uncontested nature of them makes them very powerful and annoying to play against and indeed we have um, great compensation 
So they won't uh, take the knight, and instead they'll play a stronger option, which is d4. This is their best move. We play h6 here, kicking away the knight, forcing it to take, and the reason d4 was good is because they sort of want a bit of tempo, because now they have the center a bit more controlled, but that's okay. They play d5, we take back control. They play c3, we bring our queen out. We're trying to play energetically and not, you know, giving them full initiative. We're trying to counterattack when possible. If they play c takes d4, by the way, we just take, and then we're very happy. We're going to take on g2 and totally crash through. If they play the better option of knight g3, then we retreat our knight. And after something like castles, knight to d6, they are better here, but they have to play with maximum precision to, to prove that advantage, you could say. So, for example, knight d2, king g8, and already after knight b3, that's an inaccuracy. Even though it seems very natural, now we already have a very pleasant position um, where we're up material. Noticing, by the way, you should uh, understand and emphasize that we're up a pawn in this position. And after b6, all of our pieces get in. The bishop through b7 uh, will find home um, on this long and powerful diagonal. Uh, the king can come to h7 to let the rook in, the bishop comes to e7 as well, and all of our pieces can develop, and it's going to be very, very difficult for them to find a way to prove any sort of advantage, because we're equalizing on the development front, we have good center control, we're up upon, it's a very pleasant position for us. Um, and aside from that, there's not much more variations that need to be covered. I mean, that is basically it. So their best case scenario is to get to a position like this where they have to be super precise and with a small error uh, playing very naturally like knight to b3, we're already very happy and, and just equalizing. And other than that, if they make earlier mistakes in the game, for example, after knight takes on e4, if they take on e4 or if they take with the knight uh, on f7, then we already are much better and we have great tactical ideas. So a very fun position. I really enjoy playing this uh, with black and it can give you some really nice tactical, aggressive, initiative-based um, attacks. So hopefully you enjoyed this video. Let me know what you think of this opening. Subscribe if you're new around here. Check out my website so you see a full list of the projects that I'm working on, all the master classes and things of this nature that I have on this channel. And I'll see you guys all in the next video. Peace out.